Um, the art show. I actually uh, had a conversation with Ron Rice, who's a, a, a member of the BC Association of Friendship Centers, and he was telling me this story about a friendship center in Ontario. And uh, it was it's a really good story, actually. Um, this master's student was, he went to the Friendship Center and met with the executive director and was actually looking to connect with uh, community artists uh, for her work um, uh, as a master's student or, you know, uh, the details are a little bit shady. Um, that's funny. Anyway, okay. So she's sitting there with the executive director and um, she says, I'm looking to uh, connect with artists kind of like that. And she points to a picture on the wall. And the executive director um, looked at the artist, looked at the art, and said, and didn't really know who it was, kind of thing. There was a bit of a, a gray area. And this whole story is a little bit about the gray area. Um, and uh, so, the, so the master student decided to change her thesis and, and decided to do a catalog of that friendship center's art collection, and one of the, you know, one of the things that they found, she found, was a, uh, I think she found two Norval Marusos, uh, and they were kind of hidden in a basement, if I remember the story correctly. Uh, and so this French, this uh, master student, she did the uh, catalog, she assessed and created a database, and at the end of her process, she uh, found a collection of artwork, Aboriginal artwork, which was worth over $600,000. Yeah. And Ron Rice told me this story, and I thought, oh my. I don't believe that this is just unique to that Friendship Center in Ontario. Right? And so um, part of what I did for my Canada Council grant to be a curator in residence was I included uh, a project idea which was to look at the collection here to create a preliminary list of it, uh, preliminary documentation, and to also um, work collaboratively with the center. Um, and so I've been working with Shona Collison and Leslie McGeary to create um, temporary exhibitions which uh, showcase the work, sh uh, showcase the archive, this, this, um, this archive of artwork uh, which is over 280 objects. Yeah. So the center, uh, much like the center in Ontario, uh, has been around since 1969. And since 1969, uh, it has had a mandate of supporting community. Artists are a part of community. So one of the ways that the centers, these centers across the country, they've been buying artwork specifically, or, you know, buying artwork directly from the artist. Um, giving our artists space to make art, doing community-based projects where artists are working with youth. And uh, so the earliest, um, here at this center, the Victoria Native Friendship Center, what I found on the earliest piece was 1970, right? It's incredible. It's an incredible history. Um, and as a curator, or a curator in residence at Open Space, um, as a curator who's been working as an independent curator for 10 years, what I know is that many artist-run centers are um, struggling to even support, you know, to have one exhibition of one indigenous artist a year. And here you have 40 years of consistent support of hundreds, hundreds of artists. It's incredible. And so we've been developing these exhibitions. Um, the theme is witnessing, witnessing 40 years of Aboriginal art. Um, and you come and you join the circle. And the artwork is displayed in a circle. Um, it's very purposeful that we don't have any labels so that you actually have to look and you, at the artwork. And you actually have to talk to people. You have to ask questions. Um, and 
And uh, currently, we, you know, we, we've just done the second one, which has been honoring the Coast Salish territory and Coast Salish artists. Our next exhibition will be honoring the uh, Nuchanoff artists who are housed in the Friendship Center collection. Uh, and then our final exhibition will be honoring Kwa -Kwa, the Kwa 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 artists who are housed in the collection. Yeah. Or that they're not good enough, or 
uh, all the other fallout from the trauma, um, art is such a safe, good place to come and be and hang out. So, uh, I just wanted to close by uh, a quote by uh, Robert Davidson, who's also another Haida that I have the honor of knowing. And his, his quote is, um, through the almost complete destruction of our culture, it is the art that has brought us back to our roots. I think that pretty much sums it up. So, I just see him. I'm here this evening to talk about the educational uh, qualities of art. Um, and I come from a, a family that has demonstrated this for generations. Um, my great-great-grandfather was George Hunt, who worked with the anthropologist Franz Boas to record the cultural practices and uh, traditions of the Kukwakua people. Um, my great-grandfather, uh, Chief Jonathan Hunt, there's a replica of his big house on the third floor in the Royal Bissing Museum. And my grandfather, Chief Henry Hunt, was a master carver for the Royal Bissing Museum in Thunderbird Park. And uh, under the tutelage of Chief Mungo Martin, together they created the totem poles that we see in Thunderbird Park. So my family has been working actually for five generations to uh, bring information uh, to the community about First Nations people. And I've been tasked in my family to be the next one that brings that information forward. So in my capacity as the culture and community liaison for the Friendship Centre, I've developed a program called First People's Box of Treasures. This program was developed in order to assist the teachers that are now under the enhancement agreement to provide uh, Aboriginal uh, culture in part of the curriculum in all grade levels in the schools. So this program, uh, was initially created uh, in cooperation with the museum and then became, became critical uh, right from almost the very beginning that it had to be presented by First Nations people. The interpretation of the culture, something was getting lost in the translation. So now it is done exclusively by First Nations people. And the first part of the program, it's a three-phase program. The first part takes place in the classroom. It's an introduction and uh, showcases the cultural diversity we have in British Columbia. Um, for those of you who might not be familiar, uh, we have the most different First Nations cultures than anywhere else in Canada. Once you get past the Rocky Mountains heading east, people are Cree or Dene, and it's not until you get into places like Ontario that you come across the Iroquois, the Algonquin, the Oneida, the Mohawk people. So to study First Nations people in British Columbia can be a real challenge for not only the students but the teachers as well. So the first part of the program is an introduction. The second part of the program is a tour of the Royal BC Museum, the First Peoples Gallery. And the children, uh, because they have the introduction, know what to look for. They, they learn the difference between a big house and a kukuli, a pit house. They learn the difference between a cedar dugout canoe and uh, a sturgeon canoe. So, um, and they get very enthusiastic about this when they get to recognize all of the pieces in the gallery that they already know about. The third part of the uh, program is a cultural activity that we do in, back in the classroom. And this has had very long-reaching effects with children. It allows us an opportunity to gauge the retention of the information we've shared because the activity itself, it pulls all of those elements together. And they also get to leave with something special. The, um, the craft that they usually get to do is called a potlatch pouch. And the idea of the program is to teach children how important it is to give in the Aboriginal community versus receiving. So they are encouraged to think of somebody special. The word potlatch means to give or giving. So while they're stitching away, they're thinking of their grandmother or their, their best friend or parents and something. And they will finish that no matter what. Even you know the soccer player or the computer person will be <laughs> Can you help me with this? And they, they just get really excited about it. So we feel like we're on the right track when we can engage with the children in that way. The program is also designed to be tailored to any age group. So we have worked with nursing students from the University of Victoria and Camosun College. We've worked with ESL students. Uh, we've worked with international students um, to bring this information. And the uh, information is tailored to suit the age group. So for the little ones, the kindergartens and preschoolers, we talk about the cultural significance of animals and the seasons because that's what they're studying at age level. As we get a little bit older, we're talking about uh, the difference between housing and leadership and food source and culture. As we get gradually older into the middle uh, schools and high schools, we're now talking about the Indian Act, the 60s school, uh, the, in, the uh, residential schools and all of that sort of thing. And, 
And so gradually we're making inroads with uh, the students and the teachers. And also, for those parents who chaperone the program, maybe have a tour of the museum, we are getting incredible feedback from the parents saying, I've lived in Victoria for 30 years and I can tell you what a totem pole is until now. Um, and they didn't, you know, they brought friends visiting from out of town to the museum, didn't know, even know what they were looking at. And it's very difficult to race from one tag to another tag to another tag to the gallery. But to have somebody take you through and explain what these things were for and be able to say, my great-grandmother made this chocolate blanket, or my grandfather gave this totem pole to the museum for whatever reason, it has a huge impact on the public and it has been really well received. So we feel like we're on the right track and art is a huge part of that success that we've experienced and showcasing it, especially the children. So, so we um, are very uh, grateful to see uh, so many people joining us tonight and we hope that you will uh, enjoy the pieces that we've put out. Um, this is part of a four-part series that we're doing for the Friendship Centre. We have uh, approximately 300 pieces of art that have been uh, gifted to the Friendship Centre or purchased or done as a gift exchange. Uh, every year the National uh, AGM takes place and all of the Friendship Centres across Canada are encouraged to bring a piece of art that uh, recognizes the territory they come from and then there's a gift exchange. So we have pieces from the Mohawk, Ojibwe territories, uh, Cree, um, as, as well as the people from Nunavut have uh, given us pieces here. So this is just a fraction of what we have, but in order to honor the territory that we are lucky enough to live in, this had to be our first singular First Nations show, was the uh, Kosalish. In July, we will offer a glimpse of the Nuchanos people on the west coast of Vancouver Island. And in October, we will provide uh, a glimpse of the Popakua people, my territory. <laughs> and, uh, in October, we'll save the best to last. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> and to share a story about, I have three sons, and my middle son is so proud of our heritage, and he's always telling people, you know who my great great grandmother is? And so when he was very small, he brought a friend home from school, and the two of them were trying to build a tree fort out of an old sail the father had left in the yard. So they're trying to get it over the branches, and my son Andy comes in, he goes, I can't get it to go over the branches. Mom, can you come out and help us? I thought, oh, it's been a long time since I climbed up a tree. I said, okay, sure. So I went out there, climbed up the tree, got the sail over the branches, and was coming down the tree when I heard his friend say, your mom must be an Indian. There's no way my mom would be up this tree. <laughs> 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 